sell-off, by the way, contribute about a 1% hit in the Nasdaq, something that might absorb some of the pain for those who are wondering about this entire sector. Uh, news after the bell that a Amazon earned about $5.07 a share. The estimate was for $2.50. Now, why do I mention Amazon in the context of what was going on today? A lot of people were hoping that that would provide some salve, some hope for the markets, that Facebook is its own unique deal, that this sell-off was uh, sort of targeted there and only there, and everyone can calm down. Is that the case? Uh, Charles Payne is here. We've got trader Alan Nuckman and Melissa Armo of the Stock Switch. All right, Charles Payne to you and the Amazon News. I know I'm just breaking that on you here, but a lot better than expected. Wow. What do you think of that? <laughs> just, if this number is, 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 you know, once they, you know, sometimes there's a lot of uh, factors and they Absolutely. come up with the real number. But, you know, the street was looking for $2.53. This is a double that. Uh, last year, it was 40 cents, just to tell you the exponential growth that they've enjoyed. Also, to your point about the influence on the market, in the first half of the year, of all the S&P gains, 36% came from Amazon. Now, consequently, only 8% came from Facebook, probably why we saw something of a muted response. If this is real and the guidance is just this strong, we're going to have a monster session back in these tech names by, uh, tomorrow morning. You know, Alan, when you look at this and, you know, now they're starting to pick apart who's who in this whole tech bunch. And right. and maybe uh, it's way too soon to say give up on Facebook. Uh, the stock is still up, you know, appreciably, to put it mildly, uh, back lev to levels it was at a, a couple of months ago. Having said that, right, the haves and have nots in that sector, who, who are the haves? Well, obviously, Amazon's come a long, long ways, but we were just at all-time highs in Facebook. You know, a pullback was natural. It wasn't the numbers, the earnings numbers. They were great. They had a lot of growth. It was the guidance and just talking about falling profit margins. They're going to make money at, at less uh, a growth rate than, than what they are right now. So I like Apple here at these levels. We just made new highs in Apple. And if you look, Apple and, and, and Facebook, for whatever reason, have been pr trading at roughly the same price for many, many months until this recent breakout in Facebook. Facebook essentially gave up its gains in 2018. Now we'll see what happens. But they're still up multiple hundreds of percent uh, in the last few years. So tech is definitely not over. The 8050 is the NDX target, which is about 9% above where we are right now. If you look at the decline that we had in February and that full V recovery, you add that on top. So we still have a lot more upside in tech. All right. And by the way, Amazon uh, shares are trading after hours to uh, uh, another 4% here. So it might cushion the blow uh, as, as people sort of assess the tech uh, sector. Uh, Melissa, what do you think? I think definitely the market didn't show the negative reaction to Facebook today. Facebook is kind of its own beast right now. It dropped significantly over 40 points from last night and the market really rallied from some tariff news that came out right into the close yesterday and we did hold a lot of those gains on the trading today despite the drop up in Facebook. No, 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 I, I'm glad you pointed that, Melissa, because the Dow itself up about 112 points, S&P 500, uh, minus the tech side, was doing quite fine, thank you. And Charles Payne, one of the things you had alluded to, and, and Melissa touched on very nicely, this trade or the perception that the president is more pragmatic than his rhetoric seems to indicate, uh, willing to, to, to move the ball forward with the Europeans, a sign maybe the same will apply to China, but the worries about that eased a little bit. Where, where do you see all that going? There's no doubt it eased a little bit, and uh, it's on to the big fight. Uh, and the real big fight is the U.S. versus China, but now... Per Perhaps we'll have the EU settled, EU on our side. Also, the liquid natural gas part of the deal, absolutely phenomenal. Big pushback against Russia. And, and, and I think one thing that not, there's not getting enough press is maybe a retooled NAFTA sometimes in the next several weeks, maybe less than two months. That would be absolutely huge. Those are our biggest trading partners, and it would be wonderful if we can get those done. So the, the trading stuff may fade away, and we'll get the focus 100% on the underlying fundamentals of this economy. You know, Alan, that's one of the areas that the president pounds in Iowa uh, earlier and now in Illinois um, and, and, and countless stops uh, that, that have this, uh, this notion that, look, uh, this fixation on tapes and everything else and who said what to whom and uh, whether I was, uh, could have been more in your face with Vladimir Putin. Look at the economy. Look at these earnings. Look at the backdrop. Uh, look at the jobs that are being gained. That's the purpose of these of these trips. That's the purpose, again, uh, of, of, of pretty much everything this president is doing when he's on the stump. What, what's your read on that from an investment perspective? 
Um, I would agree there is a, maybe a method to the madness. I'm about results. I don't necessarily need to know how we get there, but we've been in a strong bull market for many, many years, and it's all about earnings. Uh, this, a lot of these things that could have been distractions have now been set aside, and what you've seen repeatedly is the market sell off on the fear, but then when the reality hits and the actual uh, you know, policy is announced or, 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 or the, the issue is dealt with, you see the markets, the buyers come back in. So we've seen that time and time again. This was another example with the the uh, you know EU. So we'll look for that to continue to happen. That's how the markets are reacting to the president in this in this time of amazing uncertainty. But you have to focus on the facts. The facts are that we've got every economic metric is strong. And now that we've got the dollar stopped going up here with a key reversal top last week, making new one-year highs and a lower weekly close, that could really be the next catalyst for yep. all these markets. The dollar uh, decline would be very, very helpful to everybody. You know, Melissa, when you look at this, we should explain it, but we get back to Facebook and all this, you know, the, you know, the bigger something gets, the harder it will fall. I understand that. And just to explain to a lot of people watching that the, the hundred and, uh, you know, 14 plus billion dollar hit that Facebook uh, had today was the biggest loss in stock market history for a single company in a single day. You have to go back to Intel in September 2000 when it dropped 90 uh, million dollars in market cap on that particular day. That was just as the whole internet bubble or whatever people were calling at the time seemed to be getting pierced. But is it your sense this is a Johnny One Note? In other words, Facebook's unique issues, the privacy issues, and all of that are uh, that's Facebook. It's not endemic to technology. It, it's certainly not the Nasdaq. How do you tell your clients to? to get, get a grip in the middle of something. Well, I wouldn't run back out and buy Facebook tomorrow, even if it rallies with Amazon in the market. I'm telling you, the, 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 the drop that happened isn't good, and they've had a lot of negative publicity this year. They've weathered the storm, that's for sure. They made new highs last night over 218, but I'm telling you, they've had a lot of issues. And so they are kind of in their own separate bucket because they have some problems. That If you bought the stock over 180, where a lot of people bought in 200, then you were down this morning. So I wouldn't run back out and buy it. Let Facebook prove itself. Let it prove itself that it can fix some of these problems before you go out and buy it. All right. Uh, Charles Payne, you know, Ivanka Trump uh, has been traveling with her father for this trip, first in Iowa and now uh, in Illinois. Much of the theme of these remarks have been, and, and, and a lot of these have happened during your mind show on FBN, that the, uh, the backdrop is a good economy. The backdrop is a strong company and corporate earnings that have more than handily beaten the street. Again, <laughs> you know, Facebook notwithstanding. Sure. So, so just give me a sense of that backdrop. Let me, let me put it in perspective because one of the things that uh, investors talk about are the lower taxes and fewer regulations. Now, the pushback, the political pushback on that as well, it's only benefiting the stock market or it's only benefiting billionaires. I can tell you in the first quarter of this year, buybacks, a, a contentious issue, were up about 43% year over year. Expenditures on capital X, on CapEx projects, we're talking factories, big investments made to last three to 30 years, up 200 percent, nil, 270 percent for manufacturing. All those hard hats you see there, they're making big money and they're getting big jobs across the heartland of this country. All right. Uh, thank you guys very, very much.